Guys, and welcome back to the Off-Grid Garage here in sunny, hot Australia. Yeah, it is kind of hot still. We want to start the next big project, and I think it is actually bigger than building another battery shelf. And in one of the first steps, we want to take down this um, cloth here, this insulation cloth on the garage, and make the ceiling look like this. Yeah, nice and clean. Uh, we've got this sun cloud mix situation today. As you can see, we've got only 11 amps outside at the moment. It's not super great, but the perfect temperature to do this renovation work. And you probably think, what has this ceiling insulation stuff to do with battery and solar? You will see this in the upcoming videos. So in this, um, in this first step of the renovation, I want to take off all these yucky and dusty and mouse shitty snakes and spiders underneath there. It is the most disgusting stuff ever. I already started last week with this part here. <laughs> it is super disgusting, really. And in the next stage now, I want to take out these three fields. And all of them have this brown yucky cloth on top which is already deteriorating and falling apart and crumbling to dust. I'm probably taking the vacuum cleaner as well. And when I cut this shit, I hold the vacuum cleaner at it. So it sucks up all the dust because the last time when I did it, all these brown fibers were everywhere and I had to vacuum clean the whole garage afterwards. So I'm trying to avoid all this. Okay, without further to do exactly, let's begin. See all these coffee beans coming out? Mice poop. The whole roof underneath this cloth here is full of mice poop. That is from the last 30 years they had this installed. It's finally time to get this all off and clean this all up. Did I mention it's disgusting? <laughs> So I found uh, two nests so far. They're not, not bird nests, no, no. Uh, they were all empty, they were old ones. But uh, what they have done, so all the excess material, they have folded and pushed it into this rail here, into this um, metal beam. And this was the ideal spot for the mice to actually start a family. Yeah, start breeding, building a nest. Unbelievable. And, and the good old PHEV box from VTech. Do you remember this? This actually includes the original VTech PHEV box. This is from my other YouTube channel, Unplugged EV, where I made videos about the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. And this was an additional device you could plug into your OBD port of your car. And it gave the car superpower. At least this is what they promised. <laughs> Oh no, you know what? It didn't plug into the OBD port. It plugged in between your acceleration pedal and the MCU. So with this device, you were actually manipulating the position of your gas pedal. And if you program this one wrong, it had like 80% of the gas pedal already pushed when you started the car. So this was a really dangerous device because it allowed for these wrong parameters to be set and programmed into the PHEV box. And then when you started the car, it took off without you touching the gas pedal. So there was nothing in the actual software which prevented you from putting dangerous parameters in there. It's a bit like with the BMS today, you know. If you put the wrong parameters in, it's not good. Now imagine this with a car, manipulating the position of your gas pedal. So that's why, um, that's why the whole PHEV box is actually resting up there. Just as a reminder to the good old times. I'll link this channel down below. I haven't done videos for the last two years or something on this channel, but they are like 450 or something. So if you have some bad weather coming up, um, maybe something to watch. <laughs> and in the next step, we have to prepare these metal brackets. They are a bit rusty. You need to use some rust converter, some primer and paint them. And we also have to put this um, Tesla postcard back on the light here where it was before. It's just...
This is from IKEA. So Andy, goddamn, tell us what you're actually doing here. All right, my friends. It is time for the truth. This is a um, bookshelf <laughs> for all my two books I have. I've got this little um, network cabinet here. And this is what this metal shelf is for. And this network cabinet will go over there. So these brackets will be mounted here to this metal beam of the garage. And all my network gear from the garage here will go into this cabinet here because I need to declutter this area here completely. There are far too many network cables hanging around. There's also a network cable going up there all the way back to my Wi-Fi bridge, back to the house. And I've got now a PoE switch here, which we can use to power this Wi-Fi bridge, as well as some security cameras, the Wi-Fi access point and the network switch. This will all go in here and more. Yes, so the plan is to have my home assistant installation, which is currently inside the house, here in this cabinet as well. Because I need Bluetooth access from Home Assistant to some of the devices here in the garage. And I'm currently experimenting with this SM Light SLZB06M. This is like a network Wi-Fi, network Zigbee, network Bluetooth extender. And I had this already installed here on the network so I can use Zigbee devices here inside the garage. Yes, and this is again then related to solar and battery stuff. This seemed to be more like a Linux tech tip video now, but this all has a purpose and is directly related to a lot of devices here inside the garage. But before we get there, I need to mount this network rack just up here in this area. And I guess this is all part of the uh, transformation renovation here inside the garage. So I'm really fighting here in several battles at the same time. And I use some solar rail offcuts here to make my shelf. And this basically goes underneath the network cabinet like this. So glad I kept all these offcuts here from these solar rails. <laughs> Far too short to do anything with it with solar. But for this kind of work, perfect. And we also need to install power in this um, network cabinet here. But I don't want to use a normal 230 volt power board or something and connect the router and the Raspberry Pi and the network switch and everything. We will just do a 12 volt power supply inside this network cabinet here and then use step up converters to convert to 19 volts for the home assistant, uh, 12 volt for the router and 48 volt for the network switch. And this 12 volt supply will come from the Orion 12 volt isolated converter here in the top battery shelf. And now this is a bit inefficient because we are stepping down the 48 volt from the battery to 12 volt, then go over to the network cabinet and then step it up again to 48 volt. And I don't really care about these losses, you know. The power consumption for all these network components here will be very small. So we give this a shot and see how we go. So I have now mounted uh, our brackets and rails under the network cabinet. So this is upside down. There, there you go. And this is how it will go on the wall. So we now need to make some space here. Get my uh, decoration off. It's just magnets. Wow, that's a strong one. So now we have to fix it with a clamp or something so I can mark and drill the holes. And then we are almost done. Ah, of course, the cutout for the brush blade. There. I can hardly see it here. Now you can see it. There's already a cutout pre-configured, so to speak, here on the back side. I just need to take out this metal and then we can put our brush plate on top of that. And I need to have a bit of acrylic or something around it to cover the corners here again. Because this one is a bit bigger than my actual brush plate. But it will be a nightmare to cut into this material here. It's so thin. There was a very, very cheap network cabinet. Very, very cheap. I'll link it down below, but it was very cheap. So it has a bit of thinner material, of course. Let's see if we can... There we go. Look how thin this metal is. It is like paper. Okay, this is a pretty nice cutout. So 
So let's see if this all fits together now. So this is the original cutout for the cables to go in. I've drilled four holes here. We've got this plexiglass cover. And we also have the plate with the brushes. It is not a super nice solution, but it is a super quick solution. And because this is the backside of this cabinet, you will never ever see this again. Never. Okay, we put the cover back on. And that's it. There you go. This acrylic plastic only covers the cutout because it's larger than my actual brush plate. I think this is good enough for the backside of the network cabinet, which goes in a garage and you will never see this again. It's just so no spiders and lizards are getting in. Okay, I know this is not the best lighting here, but let's see how we go. Okay, here I've got the whole construct. Now let's see if this actually fits here. This is not a one person job. Definitely not. And where's Andy too when you need him? He's on a holiday. He's on uh, somewhere in the Caribbean doing a hairstylist course. You know, he wants to get some dreadlocks. Yeah. Piece of wire always helps. That, ladies and gentlemen, gives us a good first impression of this new uh, box. So that's roughly how it will be. Uh, I'm not sure about the height. It might be a bit higher, but not too high. That That's why I didn't put it down here somewhere or something, because there will be shit on top of it. So up there, it's dead space, out of the way, perfect. Uh, at least for now. All right, one pilot hole. Just making sure there's no cable or water or gas pipe behind it. Okay. Come on. Come on, I need to get one in. Oh, that's easy. One screw in, can't fall down anymore. Yeah, that's perfect access from the back to get into my brush plate. Okay, if I leave this one... Oh, it actually hangs on one screw. Who needs four screws? Oh, shit. Lost the nut. It's gone forever. Yo, that's better. So, and now I can put a level on top of it and get this straight as possible. And then we can mark the other two holes here for this bracket. It's not too bad here. Yeah, this, um, this gap is a bit of a f up here. <laughs> I measured the width of the cabinet and cut the rails in the same length. But I forgot about this um, flange over here where these two beams are joining. I need this 20 mil gap here, so we are a bit short on this side. Didn't want to cut another six meter length of rails, you know, so <laughs> that's just what it is. We will always see that and we always will be reminded that we are all humans and make mistakes. So I also need to ensure this doesn't interfere with my camera arm. No, it doesn't at all. Nice, perfect. Cool. Fest. That is amazing. Wow. I thought this is flexing a bit, but no, this is bombenfest. This is now a structural part of the garage. 
<laughs> wow. Nice. So I had a bit of trouble getting this nut behind this beam here. And as you can see here, it's it's folded around, so you have to get your hands behind it. Usually not a big deal, but there is also a um, there's a wooden post right behind this beam, which is holding the whole shelf here. So there's only a small gap, probably like 30, 35 millimeters. And I could just barely put my fingers in there and feel the screw from the back. So I actually lost a couple of flange nuts now. They all went down uh, somewhere behind there. We will find them eventually. And then I had this great idea to build myself a extension out of this 10 millimeter socket, a small extension and some blue tag, which was holding the nut in place. And then I could actually reach behind it in the right position and screw this baby in. Man, that looks amazing. That is pretty cool. And it is, it is rock solid. Look at this, the whole garage actually shakes. <laughs> and we still got enough space behind the cabinet to reach our, what is it called, brush plate. So now I have to close all these gaps here in this cabinet. I probably take it off again. There are only four screws holding it to these um, rails to close all these all these holes there, all these mounting holes and also the vent hole in the top of this cabinet. We don't need it. There will be no heat inside, nothing. And also the clearance here at the top is perfect for our new insulation going in. There's enough space on top. They're really good. Love it. All right, my friends, I think that's it for today. Uh, another small step in this whole transformation, renovation here of the off-grid garage in sunny at late night show Australia are really good. Love it. And I can still use this space underneath here. Maybe get some more Oettinger signs and bottles and put them over there. All right, my friends, so far this video from today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support. I mean, what can I say? You're donating, you are becoming a member of this channel now. You're buying me a coffee, you're leaving comments, you like the videos. This is all fantastic. On our road to 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> I know, it's, it's not really a goal, but, but we are slowly creeping in this direction. So welcome to everyone new here. And I really appreciate all the support you are doing, because all of you are my only sponsors. All right, guys, in the next video, we do something completely different again. It has nothing to do with the renovation, transformation here. We will mix up the videos a bit now, doing more battery, solar stuff, and then go back to renovation work. And we also got these two big boxes delivered today, and I think I know what is in there. When I unpack them, I'll take a photo and show this to all the members of the channel. All of them. Everyone else will see it a couple of days later anyway. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching and your support. Thanks again for watching. Ah, see you then, bye-bye. This got me out of the flow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>